Rub up your engines! Well, ha, 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 with Mary Barra and GM. General Motors is canceling their EV-only strategy and is making hybrids now. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, Toyota was right all along, right, you know? Oh, man, we're going to build all electric cars by 2035. Oh, we're going to sell these. Nobody's buying the things. I guess we're going to have to start making hybrid cars instead, right? Tuesday, GM Mary Barra told shareholders that Automaker would be revising its planned products to make space for plug-in hybrid vehicles. She says, let me be clear, GM remains committed to eliminating tailpipe emissions from our light-duty vehicles by 2035. <laughs> yeah, you know, talk the talk, but you got to walk the walk, right? If they don't buy them, you can't be building them, and nobody wants the stupid things, right? And they even lie. You see, GM said, okay, this year we sold so many electric vehicles that they say, right? But no, that's a lie. They didn't. When GM builds an electric vehicle and it's sent to the dealership, they count it as a sold vehicle because GM doesn't own it anymore. It's the dealership and they're private enterprises, right? They're all independently owned. So they own it now, not GM. So GM counts it as a sold. So when you see GM said, last month we sold uh, 45,000 electric vehicles, right? No, they didn't. They built them and they sent them to the dealerships. And if you've been watching the news lately, these dealerships are screaming bloody murder saying, please don't send us any more electric cars. We don't want them. Nobody's buying them. And I talked to a guy the other day who even went to a Toyota dealer and they had two electric vehicles and they're trying to send them back to Toyota and they said we don't want any more because nobody's buying these things. Toyota selling the heck out of hybrid cars for a while. You had to wait months and months to get a RAV4 plug-in hybrid. They were so popular, right? Well, GM, of course, as usual, is too late to the party and now we're going to make a bunch of hybrid cars now. Oh, we'll be hybrid. We'll be, huh? All I got to say is they're so far behind in everything and their quality so bad. A long time before I would ever buy a hybrid GM product. They got electric problems as it is. And an all-electric GM vehicle, it will be the last thing about They talked about, uh, we have our revolutionary Altium batteries for GM, right? And it turns out they're not working out that well. They're having problems with them, right? And they're not even building in many of them yet. Wait, they, if they ever do mass produce them, the problems they would have, the recalls they would have, right? And it just shows how GM is so out of touch with reality. Now they jump on the hybrid bandwagon. They're just like the sheep going down, following ba ba ba. Except these sheep speak English instead of sheepies. They say things like, we're committed to eliminating tailpipe, but in the meantime, we'll make a bunch of hybrid cars. <laughs> First, she says, should I daily drive a 20-year-old BMW? I'm looking at a 325XI, 2004, 75,000 miles. Is it old enough to be decent enough, reliable car? I'm in Canada, can use the all-wheel drive. Thanks. Okay, well, almost all BMWs turn into endless money pits as they age. Now, if that's really 75,000 miles, you want absolute positive proof. It's a 20-year-old car, right? That's not very much. But if it is, it could be okay if you get it cheap enough. Just realize, as it does age and stuff breaks, BMWs cost a fortune to make. And I'll tell you something about your home country, Canada. There. Something like over 80% of Canadians who have BMWs don't buy them. They lease them. Because they're smart to realize, hey, these are endless money pits when they age. So I'll lease it. I'll get rid of it before it ages. So, I mean, that's a 20-year-old car. I would not pay too much for it. I don't care that it's low mileage. It's still a 20-year-old BMW. And parts cost a fortune on those cars. They have an awful lot of plastic parts. And you live in Canada. And the difference between summer and freezing cold winter, that plastic often cracks. And all the parts on the engine that are made out of plastic, you can spend thousands replacing them. So, I mean, I personally wouldn't do it myself. You have a mechanic look at it and tell you what shape it's in. I kind of stand away from one that old in a cold climate. Key Now 101 says, what should I change on a 20-year-old Toyota Sienna minivan to make it reliable for cross-country trips? I got an 04 Toyota Sienna with 180,000 miles converted to a camper van. I want to keep it for another 10 years. In addition to a timing belt, what should I consider in replacing your shirts reliable enough to make multiple trips to New York and California? You got a vehicle, it's got a lot of miles on it, and it's 20 years old, right? What you want to do is basically find a guy like me to go through it, pay him for like a couple hours, and he'll tell you if they're leaking any fluid, if any of the rubber hoses are cracked, if any of the bushings are worn, if the tie rods or ball joints are worn, and if you haven't been servicing it 
regularly change the drive belts, the fan belts, whatever you want to call them, right? I'd flush the coolant out once every seven years and use Toyota's coolant because that's the best coolant. I would definitely service the transmission every 40,000, 50,000 miles, change the fluid and filter. Don't flush it, change the fluid and filter. Some of those things will go four or 500,000 miles. Not that much has been done to them. You picked a great van to turn into a camper van. I mean, those things can run forever. All right, if you got a Toyota with a start-stop system, Toyota actually has a system in that puts a check engine light and tells you when you need to replace the starter because, of course, it's going to wear out faster because it's always starting and stopping and starting and stopping. So, what is the magic number? Well, the magic number is 384,000 times where it puts a check engine light on. Now, I personally hate those start-stop systems. I think they're a joke. They say, oh, you save all this gas mileage baloney. Not only does it wear the starter out, wears the engine out too. The worst thing for your car is to start it. It's sitting there, the oil's drained down, then when it restarts, the oil's got to punk back up. It is just a stupid idea, but what are you going to do? These moronic government idiots have gotten involved. Boy, God, that car's got better gas mileage. So, oh, well, oh, start stop systems on it, right? Believe it or not, the first start stop system was a Volkswagen. 1983 Volkswagen Polo. Okay, way back in 83. And if you know anything about cars, you know Volkswagen has been going downhill quite some time. And it's actually the 80s when they really started to go downhill. And the start stop system is just another example of that. Now, Toyota claims that for that many stop stops, right? Stops like 27 times a day. It'll go for 50 years, okay? Well, let's face the facts. Even Toyota, most starters are not going to last 50 years anyway. So I guess you have to be warned that this many start stops. And here's the funny thing. Let's say your starter breaks after a few years, like sometimes they do, right? Then you would have to reset the start stop system. You have to pay a Toyota mechanic, a guy like me with the equipment, to hook it up. New starter, okay, start from zero. So it can count up to 384,000 times. What stupidity? Why are they even putting this crap in cars? Guess what the highest mileage pickup truck in the world that they have actual records for us. No surprising, it's this Toyota Tacoma. It even outlived its owner. It's still going and the owner died in 2023. It's a 2008 Toyota Tacoma which has 1,625,000 miles on it. I've never seen one that far. I've seen it five, 600,000 miles, but I've never seen one go that far, right? No surprise there. Those things can last unless it even outlasted its owner. He conked off last year and the truck's still going. Now this guy, Mike Neal, who's now passed away, purchased in November 2007 the 2008 Tacoma, brand new. And he went 1.5 million. Now it's got 1.625 million, so obviously someone inherited it and they're still driving it. There. Can you imagine? So many guys, they says, hey, uh, hey, Joe uh, wheeled you his pickup truck, but it's got one and a half million miles on it. Then you get it and drive it another 125,000 miles and it's still going. <laughs> And it's pretty believable because it wasn't just his odometer. They kept records of all the servicing he had done there. So it's the real mileage. And interesting enough, it wasn't even a manual transmission. It was a six-speed automatic. So that tells you, Toyota knows how to make those little bitty pickup trucks. There's no arguing that. And of course, it was an 08, so it was probably made in San Antonio, Texas, where they make them pretty good. Unfortunately, they don't make Tacomas there anymore. They only make the Tundras. They make all the Tacomas in Mexico. So let's see if any of the Mexican ones can go 1.6. 625 million miles. I wouldn't bet the bank on that one. Now, here's a warning not to take people's words and use car lots because they'll do anything to get your money. And once they got your money, they don't care what they told you. Christopher says, I told the used car lot I wanted a pickup truck. So I got a Nissan pickup truck. I told them I couldn't pay over 500 bucks a month. They said, oh, the initial payment is $750 a month, but that will be reduced to $500 a month. My second payment was also $750 per month. I went to the dealership. They said, well, you got to contact the finance company. And then I got the runaround. So I asked them, what can I do? They said, well, just give us back the vehicle. So I parked it. They took it away and haven't had a car since August of 2020. I'm sorry I didn't email you back in the day for an opinion, so I could have made a knowledgeable decision. Thanks for being there. The best thing to learn from is other people's mistakes. Because if you make a mistake, then you have to pay the consequences. If someone else does, they made a mistake and they have to pay. But you don't if you learn from their mistake. Never listen to what people tell you. Oh, don't worry, it's seven fifty dollars the first month, but then it'll go down. And of course, it never went down. And he gave him the car back and doesn't have a car now. You can't 
trust people's words. You have to look at the contract. And if they say they're going to do this, that doesn't mean squat. They're all liars at those places. All they want you to do is sign on the bottom line. And unless it's outright thievery, like it was at that Toyota dealer I did years ago in Houston, where the old lady bought a brand new Toyota Tacoma, and then what happened? It was ten, twelve thousand dollars more than what she had thought it was. But she had signed the contract, didn't read all the fine print of what they added in, right? And the only reason she got her money back was because I made a video on it, and then the manager who previously said, "Well, you signed the contract." Oh, oh no, 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 no! Don't worry about it. Here's a check for the difference. Can't trust those people as far as they throw them. Make sure if you get some nonsense like that. Well, your payment seven fifty, but it'll go down from there. Don't listen to them. You got to read the paperwork and see what you're paying. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.